Welcome back, goons. You're watching Explore the Weird. You must be into creepy and weird things. We're about to go into creepy and weird things. It's my For You page back again. We're going to see what it's got to show. Are you a goon? Did you smoke the like button before the video even started? That's a true goon. That's a true goon. Are you like Teddy? What's a goon? Don't worry about it. You just keep watching the videos. Uh, longer form content. I really react to the videos. If that's not you, click away. Click away because you don't like talking. You just want to watch videos and that's not me. I actually need this as a reaction channel. Um, goons, we're going to get right into it. The question is, if your agenda of CERN is to create and find all these scientific experiments when it comes to the colliding of these atoms and you've achieved just about everything you could possibly achieve in finding the things you spent billions and billions and billions of dollars to do this why do you need another one why do you need a bigger one why do you need to go right back on top of switzerland cern's corporation released this was not made up by anybody else of the actual footprint of the new cern that's going to be created it almost touches Davos. It circles the entire nation of Switzerland. For what? To collide more atoms? Come on, use your simple mind and ask a simple question. When you add up all the CERNs around the world and all the ones that are planned, you're talking trillions of dollars that are being spent underground for something that 99.999% of human beings will never be able to see. Why? What are you really doing? And that's why I believe that it's not really about scientific experiments. It is about portals. It is about veils. It is about opening things up. In predictive programming, they begin to have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. So to desensitize yourself, there's an entire generation that's open to portals. All they have to do is watch Stranger Things. <laughs> All they have to do is watch Stranger Things. Stranger Things science fiction. That's not going to work. They, they got to test out the thing. They're scientists. They need to make sure they can test the hypothesis. They're going to come to their own conclusion. They're going to destroy. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Yes. CERN wants to build a larger CERN, a larger Hadron Collider. And there are many that exist around the world. And you start to wonder who's going to get it first. Who's going to be the one that unveils the truth? Wait, they actually say there's been scientists that you can actually go and video anywhere on the CERN campus except the Hadron Collider. So you start to wonder what's actually going on? What's actually going on? When can I talk to the other beings on the other side? I just want to meet the six dimensional Teddy. Hello, six dimensional Teddy. How are things over there? Oh boy, I wonder what he looks like. Do you think we're still visually the same or do I have like six other arms or like ligaments I don't see in this? Never mind. We're going to keep it going. You want visible proof that energy is all around us? Check this out. So here I have a dodecagram coil, which I have promoted in my previous videos, which is going to be utilized as an electron harvester for my replication of the electric pyramid generator. Now to prove that energy is all around us, check out what happens when I move this coil. Right here, I get 0.15 millivolts. Now what happens as I get higher off the ground? So at about 5 feet, I'm at 200 millivolts. And when I take the coil to roughly 7 feet, watch how many millivolts I produce now. Oh, hang on, I gotta reground it. And at roughly 7 feet, I get... About a half, half a volt. A steady half a volt right here. Then when I drop it back down, look. Up, down, all the way down. Be sure to follow my page for more updates. I'm not even sure how this coil is harnessing the free energy, but it's figured it out. It's harnessing the ether. Can't you tell? Wait, I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> oh my God. How? So it's not, it's not even like copper coils or it's like the wider the coil is, the more turns the coil has, the greater the electrons will be harvested. So somehow 
him lifting this thing up and down is causing electrons to go into this coil and produce electricity and then he had to ground it why do you have to ground it don't you just have to complete the circuit grounding is completing the circuit when it comes to ether harnessing i'm trying to figure this out you stop it you stop it daddy it's this is simple i i know i can see the goons being like how do you not understand this is like the circle of life thing is this what terrence howard was like hey once you stack up enough uh dodoka dodoka grams Dodecagrams? I can't even say this word. Dodecagram. Dodecagram. I'm going with dodecagram. If I'm wrong, just let it be. Just let it be. Don't even correct me. Just keep watching and eating. How you doing, TV gang? I see ya. I see ya. Oh boy. Oh boy. What are we eating today? I want to know. What are we? What's what's the thing? What are you guys eating? Let me know, please. Um, actually. Just eat healthy things. Just eat. Never mind. We're going to keep it going. It just gets more bizarre as we go on. When you create these vortexes, you start to spiral motion inside the sphere, and then it travels down. So you got an outer cylinder. And one vortex is inside the outer, but outside the inner. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then the next vortex going in the opposite direction and the opposite spin is inside the next cylinder. Okay. Now, in order to transition from, I can show you this on here, because I got photographs of all the components, how they fit together, videos of them being assembled in the machine shops, right here on this laptop, so you can see it. You can't, like if you have a sphere and you just cut a round hole in it, you stick a cylinder onto it it's got this sharp edge and that would induce turbulence that would affect this coherent organized vortex that forms so you have to have a transition between the cylinder and the sphere to prevent that turbulence from being introduced experimentation has shown that one angle seems to be optimum for minimizing the introduction of the turbulence what do you think that angle is 51.84 degrees Slope to base of Khufu's pyramid. Another coincidence? I don't know. But that leads me to think, okay, I've suspected all along that these pyramids and these structures are part of an ancient technological system. Probably somewhat along the lines of the principles of Nikola Tesla, right? Who was able to generate energy. Wait, what the heck? What the heck? At when he was first talking, I'm trying to understand this thunderstorm generator, and it went from that to like the pyramids but he's talking about wait how does a thunderstorm generator even work you fly those things up into the air but then it said natural i'm just trying to understand i don't understand but i've seen this guy i think on joe rogan podcast i think he's pretty good unless i'm confusing him for someone else and then i did a thing i'm sorry um but yeah he looks very familiar i feel like there's probably some legitimacy to this i think this is the guy that's like anti global warming or something i forget i forget he's something there's something with the, with him um they very interesting i'm not sure how a thunderstorm generator works he kind of explained it but i'm not even sure how why you build one why you need a thunderstorm does it produce a thunderstorm oh boy all right we're gonna keep it going this is a drawing of a physicist who left cern because he feared what they were doing to humanity and what he saw will make you question everything cern is the biggest physics lab in the world that is devoted to figuring out the most basic elements of our universe and they do this by smashing together atoms at incredibly fast speeds or at least we're told we decided to remote view cern to learn more about them because if you know anything about cern there are a lot of conspiracies around them and i mean a lot so we remote viewed cern and here's what dick got back and one of them is a guy that i see him and he's got really conflicting emotions he's really smart he's a physicist he's highly regarded he has a lot of credentials but he walks away he's got disgust and fear and regret and he's he fears for humanity and he's worried about like is this going too far or we shouldn't be gods this is god's territory god should be doing this not us and what he's concerned about is the energetic thing that they're gonna do something that will affect humanity physically, uh, mentally, and emotionally. And he, he didn't like that. He was worried about that. But what about the other conspiracies? Go to our bio to see the full video. 
oh man he didn't like that oh boy oh boy he's the he's the protector he knows he's gonna save humankind no no we're already we're already systematically in this negative negativity all around us and we're the goons that are staying positive and beating this matrix you'll see you'll see so let this CERN physicist leave there's gonna be another CERN physicist that takes a spot and makes it happen you know it's gonna happen it's just a matter of time maybe eventually there will be intervention like yet again like that missile intervention where some UAP comes in and they're like nah don't do this but right now no one's intervening we're gonna keep going maybe we open the portal maybe we find the other side the six dimension teddy or maybe we find many other things there's like what is it like antimatter universe can connect with them as well there's many things there's many things it could be um and then he's like hey god should be doing this but then the in alan watts theory everyone's god he could be his own god he could be the one we're all at the same level we're all equal <laughs> the all in one. Oh my god oh my god why am i trying to rationalize this we're gonna keep it going oh yeah teddy you just want him to take over yeah yeah Wait, take over what? No, no, no. Oh my God. You just sent me this video right here. All I can say is goosebumps on top of goosebumps. Y'all watch this, man. This isn't, this is, this is going to get this place shut down. Okay, so this whole thing had kind of been confusing at parts. A minute ago, I saw her take a video of a rock that was chipping and it was shutting ship like that. And then my Shakira was over here and she's beating on this stuff. And we realized that this chip's like a plaster and it's like a hollow sound compared to the, well, wait, the real rock. Look, there's a perfect scene. I mean, that goes all the way up. And like this is placed together, plaster over. And then probably was like painting the or some shit. Okay, so almighty powerful ones, all I ask is when y'all shut this place down for research purposes, just let me and Nick and them come back and check it out. You know what I'm saying? We just post it and y'all can all see it. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, please do the exploring for us and let us know. Let the goons know. Clark Payne, you're on a mission. We're sending you on a mission. You're going to go in there. You know what I'm thinking? This could actually, we've seen videos where things seem hollow and then like people chisel into them and they find like all kinds of gold and riches and ancient tech and you're like yep this is the thing maybe that's all this is maybe this was back in the day before banks they hid the things in the mountains they made plaster cases in the mountains and there's like there could be ammo in there there could be arrowheads in there you just gotta chisel in but then again if someone else gets there before us we need to be the ones that get there first clark Payne, you're on a mission <laughs> make it happen all right, um, we're gonna keep it going. Why is no one talking about this kind of temptation? The greatest weapon of mass destruction in world history is Satan's favorite secret weapon. You know what it is? Food. The very first temptation in the history of the world was a food temptation. The very first temptation of Christ was a food temptation. Oh, but wait, there's more. The children of Israel went down into Egypt and were slaves for 400 years because they were looking for food. Food is Satan's secret weapon. Maybe that's why it says in the New Testament, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Wow. Eat or drink? Doesn't seem like that should go there. Whether or not you pray or read the Bible, do all to the glory of God. That's what we think. Whether or not you go to church or you tithe, do all to the glory of God. No. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Food is Satan's secret weapon. He's used it to kill more people in world history than any other weapon. Most Americans dig their graves with a knife and fork. I'm telling you, your health, use it, your fitness, use it, or you will lose it. The Bible says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Therefore, honor God with your bodies. If you want to honor God in all things, then I invite you to add me right now. Yeah, that is an interesting statement. I feel like this guy must be eating food too. He makes food sound so bad, but it's like, hey, now we need food and water to live. Wait. Do we need food and water to live? I've heard about those sun people. They just like, ah, we just harness the power of the sun. It's real good over here. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. Maybe we got to do an experiment. I have done um, water fasting before for about like a week. And that was pretty okay. It was like after the third day, it got so easy not to eat. But then I still needed the water. I don't know. I don't know. How do you win? How do you win? 
It's healthy poison. Just find the healthy poison. Organic and then you scrub the pesticides off. I hear that's the one of the best ways right now. Or you do the salt or vinegar bats or like whatever bats you can. Whatever bats you can. You need to eat that healthy food. But then again, this guy's like, hey, that's a... Ah, there's no winning. There's no winning. There's no winning. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, let's uh, keep it going. Did you know that the global elites are planning to fake the end times? You might think that's impossible, but this is how they do it. First, they'd have to position a savior. You know, like someone that's willing to die for our freedoms. You know, or maybe they'd promise us eternal life. You know, maybe something like Neuralink. But how could you fake cataclysmic events, right? First, you'd have to create a screen. And that's where the chemtrails come in, leaving a backdrop for this. Then you'd have to have projectors set up around the world in like every state, in every country. I mean, it worked kind of like this. And they're all in on it. I mean, we've seen some dry runs already, right? You've probably seen this circling around everywhere. But they would fake absolutely everything. Cataclysmic damage and even the second coming. But why, you might ask? Because all this stuff happens in the Book of Revelations. But at the end, good triumphs over evil. They want you to think that they're in control. What do you think? I mean, at the end, good triumphs over evil. So I guess that uh, don't matter to me. We win in any way. All the goons are good. Do positive things. Do good things. Build up your karma. Build up your karma. Oh, boy. Could be useful. Could be useful. Good things start happening to you when you do good things and positive things. Um, By the way, how you guys doing? Is everything okay? You hanging in there? Is this a lot to take in? It's a lot to take in for me. So I can only imagine how you guys are doing. Oh, Teddy, they just watch you and they know they don't have to spiral because you spiral for them. Wait, who was that? Was it yeah, Crazy Teddy? Was that you? Oh, my God. I'm turning into Crazy Teddy. I can't even differentiate anymore. I can't even figure out who's Crazy Teddy and who's me. Maybe it's just me all the time. Maybe I am the Crazy Teddy. Oh, my God. Here comes the spiraling back again. Here comes the spiraling back again. Prince Charles is the main heir of Count Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I agree. That sounds insane. I bet you one million dollars. Bring, bring that up, Jamie. <laughs> I bet Prince Charles, Count Dracula. Okay. Prince Charles is the heir of Count Dracula. That right? He moved in five years ago to Count Dracula's castle, and he lives with a group of homeless <laughs> of homeless children. In it. No, he does not. I swear to God, Prince Charles, Prince Harry's dad, Prince Charles, the heir of the throne of the dragon. Okay. Is a Transylvanian According prince. to this Google search from express.co.uk, Prince Charles has distant kinship to Vlad Tepes, the 15th century Wakalian ruler whom the Irish novelist based his Dracula. Hold on, hold on. Prince Charles, like the one that we all know, Prince Charles. Yeah, he's related to Count Dracula. Or Dracula. Same. <laughs> same to same. But it's way worse than that. And now he, he lives in Dracula Castle with children. According no, to express.com. I swear to God. He lives with... You will uh, that's also on express.com. According to this British tabloid. You get five know. punches right in the nose. Don't lie. He lives, <laughs> it says, with the orphans in the castle. Prince Charles? Pull up. Prince Charles, Dracula Castle. That's how you do a Google search. My yeah. God. You just cut your shit in this half. This guy's good, good at Google. Prince Charles, Dracula Castle. Amy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's going to do this. You're going to find out my line. <laughs> Wait, what the heck? What the heck? I mean, he was so certain. And by the way, Alex Jones, don't come after me, YouTube Terms of Service. I know it's Alex Jones. You stop it. We've already done this once before. We don't need to go down this path again. Um, it's a love hate relationship with Alex Jones. He got my first shadow ban. So, because of him. Um, regardless, regardless. <laughs> Uh, yeah, is Prince Charles, uh, or King Charles now? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's ascended. He's moving. He's moving. But then again, if he's a vampire, does that mean Elizabeth was a vampire? Is Elizabeth just resting in peace, and then soon she's going to awaken again on the 300-year reset? They're like, ah, no one remembers what I look like now. I'll just be the... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's so many similarities. How does he know this? How does he make these correlations? Oh God, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, and I'm, so many things are just like making sense at the same time. And then you got Kate, and then Kate is being a AI. Never mind. We're, I'm, I'm spiraling. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep it going. I don't know if you're ready to hear this, but your favorite celebrity is friends with the witch. 
Oh, man, it all makes sense with the rumors that are being put out by Usher. Pay attention, Do you baby. know who that is? We'll get to who she is here in a second, but just wait. Oh, it's definitely starting to make sense. As you can see, this is ASAP Rocky right here, right? It's definitely starting to make sense. As you can see, that's the Migos right there. I think we're missing one of those members, right? Everybody's friends this with This is Mrs. Her. Michelle Lamy, and I'm sure Weird. this picture right here tells a thousand words in itself, right? If you don't know about the controversy behind Usher or why I'm showing you this lady, I'll fill you in. There was a photo of Usher that was released just recently. And in that photo, you can clearly see that it looked nothing like Usher to even begin with. I'm sure everybody's up to date about the cloning process that's rumored to happen in the industry, right? I know it sounds crazy, right? I'm sure we all sound like conspiracy theorists. I get it. But why do you think they made a show called Who Cloned Tyrone? People really need to start thinking outside Good the movie, box. by the way. This is ASAP Rocky's wife, Rihanna. If this photo in itself doesn't tell you that there's some weird shit going on, I really don't know what will. This lady right here has a lot of controversy behind her name. But as you can see, Michelle Lamy is a French culture and fashion figure. He's been a clothing designer, a performer, film producer, and more. And is the wife of none other than Rick Owens. Does anybody know who Rick Owens is? Because, God, once you dig right. a little deep, you can't stop digging. And then you start to find things that you really thought you would never find in the first place. Things that you actually can't present openly here on TikTok anymore. And reasons of why I actually started a Twitter profile. Do look for my link in the bio. But the fact that and Usher is heavily... What the heck? R.I.P. Takeoff. R.I.P. Takeoff. Loved Migos. Loved Migos. I mean, two of them exist, so it's okay. We're going to keep it going. Um, they're going to keep it going. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how it works now. I don't know. I don't know what happens once. I mean, some groups keep going, right? Even after band members die. Band members. Rap members. Rap artist rap groups. Boy band? I don't know. How did this turn into Migos? Uh, yes, so there's a witch, and this witch is uh, doing the things. She's uh, got the networking connects, and who's Rick Owens? I don't know who Rick Owens is. Do you guys know who Rick Owens is? I was trying to drill down into it, but I'm like, sounds familiar. The name sounds familiar. Was he in Baywatch? No, I never mind. That, that must have been some other guy. Who is that? David Hasselhoff? I'm thinking SpongeBob SquarePants right now. I don't know why. SpongeBob SquarePants sounds real good right now. I kind of want to watch SpongeBob back again. Um, man, I used to really enjoy watching SpongeBob after hitting that like button, too. Uh, wait, wait, ADHD, ADHD. Sorry, uh, yeah, there's a witch in Hollywood. There's many witches in Hollywood. There's demon lords in Hollywood. It's all negativity over there. So just, uh, understand what you're watching and just, uh, graze gracefully. Yeah, graze gracefully. Graze gracefully? Oh, boy. Coca-Cola has many surprising uses. It can clean rusty tools when soaked for 30 minutes. It removes gum from shoes and hair by rinsing or soaking. Boiling Coke in a burnt pot makes it easier to clean. Pouring Coke in a kettle and boiling it removes scales. Mixing Coke with detergent removes kitchen odors and stains. Adding Coke to laundry detergent removes black mold. Coke mixed with egg white shines stainless steel. A mixture of Coke, toilet water, detergent, baking soda, and vinegar can clean a dirty washing machine. Oh my gosh. Pouring Coke in a toilet, letting it sit, and flushing removes stains. Did he say a mixture of Coke, toilet water? I think he said toilet water. Oh my god, that's that don't use toilet water to clean your laundry or whatever. Use regular water. Um yeah, it sounds like Coke has a lot of uh versatility, just like uh Listerine, right? Listerine was first invented as a floor cleaner and some guy put it in his mouth and he's like, Yeah, this also cleans in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Coke was first wait, I think Coke was first invented as a medicine that the people prescribed oh, that only the cool guys got the Coke, you know? Wait a second. That was a whole different type of Coke, I think. Never mind. Never mind. I still use Coke as medicine. Only when I feel sick, my stomach don't feel good. I'm like, hey, maybe I should drink some soda. Sometimes it's ginger ale. A lot of the times it's ginger ale, but sometimes it's not ginger ale and it's Diet Coke. Uh, still has the same effect, I think. Still has the same effect. You don't tell me. You don't tell me. Oh, boy. Actually, I started drinking um, Thumbs Up. Thumbs up is uh, international, so I started uh, ordering from Wii, and on there they give you access to like uh, international sodas, and thumbs up is uh, pretty good. It's got real sugar in there instead of that high fructose corn syrup. 
regardless, it's all bad for you. So healthy poison, healthy poison. Just indulge once, uh, once in a blue moon. You can only get a four in a order. So yeah, I spread that out as much as I can. Why am I? T We're gonna keep it going. About the aliens that contacted us in 1981, trying to tell us how to stop reincarnating as humans over and over and over again. <laughs> You're foolish. <laughs> That's what I thought too. Until I heard the full story. In 1981, Carla Rucker, who was a girl from Kentucky, began receiving telepathic contact from a group of entities calling themselves Ra. According to Rucker, these were the collect. Okay, hold, stick with me. The collective consciousness from a higher dimension of the planet Venus. They evolved 2.6 billion years ago into a higher dimension, and they came back to give us information and to tell us how to stop reincarnating and much more. Then over the next couple years, they kept this contact tech going and there was three of them there was carla herself there was don then there was also jim who jim wrote down everything don was the one asking questions it was kind of written in a q a format and they, because they were asking questions to this entity but the entity was actually talking through carla and all of these conversations they actually put into a book a book series actually i think four or five books and it's called the law of one so what you're saying is she got possessed i wouldn't say she was possessed because she had a bible at her head in order to make contact with them and also this is all documented extensively like they had microphones on the whole time you can actually go listen to the original audios from 1981 okay so how do we stop reincarnating over and over then? Well, real quick, I think it's important to understand what the main message of Ra actually is. Here's a quote from session four. The law of one, though beyond the limitations of name, as you call vibratory sound complexes, may be approximated by stating that all things are one, that there is no polarity, there is no wrong, no right, no disharmony, but only identity. All is one, and that one is love light, or light slash love, the infinite creator. So it's about everything being God. Kind of, but it's not a religious book at all. In the book, it actually says that it doesn't matter if you know about the book, The Law of One, and if you don't even know about what the Law of One actually is. That's fine. The only thing you need to do to move on is you need to love and be in service to others. Like get to heaven? Not in the traditional sense at all. In the Law of One philosophy, there are seven major densities in our universe. Think of them as different thresholds that have been separated off, but they're just different vibrational pockets in which different bodies can exist. Another way to think about it is think about the ocean. When you go down in the ocean, you need to have a specific body in order to go far enough down. And so what the law of one is saying, and what Ra is saying is that you need to have different bodies for each density. And again, there's seven of them. Seven major ones, that is. So then reincarnation is kind of like just playing the game of different bodies with different experiences. So how does loving others get you to a higher density? Well, according to what they're telling us, it's actually just math. If you're more than 50% in service to others, then you'll move on in the positive polarization from this third density to fourth density. But there's also the option to move on negatively, which means you're 90, according to law of one, 95% or more in service to yourself. So there really is negative entities. Yeah, I feel like there really is negative entities. Man, this girl, I mean, she had the Bible right uh, over her head. There was also like a silver cup, which I'm like, what is that? And the candle right next to it, is that how you tap in? Was she the original Bashar before Bashar? Is Bashar just getting the same? Is he, is he doing the same thing as her? We just like a more modern version? It's like, I just tap in and I'm synchronized. I know all the things. And in fact, he's just talking to the people of Ra. He just don't know. He just don't know. Oh, boy. There was a lot. There was a lot to take in. It sounds like we've been doing this since 1981. People got that remote um, remote downloads. You know, those downloads just come right to them. They're so lucky. They're so lucky. Uh, did we stop? Did we stop bringing there's so many things there's so many things but i don't know i don't know you know my religion goes reincarnation is completely okay i'm not here to change your religion i'm not here to negate your re religion i'm quite neutral actually um so it's a interesting concept if we need to stop reincarnating so we can get to different densities and go up in densities i'm like bro i'm just trying to reach nirvana i'm gonna just keep doing the positive things there's negative entities all around me so yeah where are the positive goons all around that are going to keep it going. We're going to 
reach the things. We're going to reach Nirvana. You guys are all going to make it with me. We're all going to win the simulation. That's the goal. I want to win. I want to win. Okay, so here's something freaky that I learned today. During the Queen's funeral, a weird voice was caught saying something very creepy and no one knows what it means or who they are. Take a listen for yourself. The death is irreversible and the fact that she's As you can see. As you can see here in London, it is a lovely day, and as the hearse heads out until... Like, what does that even mean? The death is irreversible. Well, like, no, duh. And the fact that she's trapped... Where's she trapped? Trapped where? What do they know that we don't know? Huh? Yo, yo, I just learned about, uh, from Alex Jones that King Charles is related to Dracula. So now I'm looking at Elizabeth, and I'm going... She is trapped. They got her in the coffin, because they got to do the reset so we don't remember when they bring her back oh boy oh boy i'm spiraling i'm spiraling i can feel myself spiraling i'm like teddy are you serious right now i'm like yeah i'm serious right now wait who's that <laughs> there's too many teddies in me my monologues are going crazy in my head uh maybe i should have just been an npc teddy it would have been so much easier no monologue no nothing just living life nice and lonely nobody talking but then again who would i i love talking why am I very interesting video spiraling real hard right now? Got two more left to go. Get the heck out of here. Here you are, like, blurring out the captions. This probably is another video where the guy's like, I'm just a metal detector lover, and I found this in the woods. Or this is completely fake, and the guy buried it, like, a, two weeks ago, and he's like, I'm gonna go back. I put the two cement blocks there, uncover it, and make it feel, feel like a true discovery. Or maybe he's the one that stole it and hid it, so, and then finds it, pretends like he finds it so he can keep it. I just... Regardless, regardless, if this is true, are those bronze or those gold? What's supposed to be happening? How much money you make? How much money you make? I mean, how much money you steal? Wait, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> do good things. Do good things. Don't steal. Um, all right, we're going to do one more. Just one more. Quantum trapping. That's amazing. As, as long as it's so the cold. So it's superconducting. It's frozen with liquid nitrogen. Upside down. Can you put it on the track for us? Yeah. And I can just rotate it. So it's actually floating above the surface. Yeah, it's not floating. It's locked above the surface. This, and it will just go around like this. It gives a vibration. Right. And I can even lock it in the uh, opposite way. So Same it can thing. hang I'm upside down. locking it upside down. And then it is suspended. Yo, that is cool. That is cool. Is that how UAPs are doing it? I thought it was they were uh, manipulating the gravity, like Bob Lazar said, and they just like phew, slide down the gravity um, differences. Uh, quantum locking. What makes this quantum? Are they harnessing qubits? What makes this quantum? I want to know so much. UAPs could be using this. And then where the circular thing that the UAPs are just... Is that why they go so fast? They're just locked in and like, boom. They're like the ISSs. Never mind. Never mind. There's a lot of things happening and churning in my head. I want to know more uh, on what makes this quantum, but it because like it just looks like liquid nitrogen and magnets. You know, probably anyone can make this into a toy or make this into a larger scale, and then it's just us and we think it's UAPs. Oh no! Oh no! All right, where you, this is it. We're done. You made it to the end. How you feeling? How you feeling? Did you make it? I want to know if you made it. If you made it. Let me know.
I literally have, I'm running out of things. I'm running out of things to, for you guys to uh, tell me. Let me see. Maybe I get, I go get something. If you made it to the end, I'll be right back. A few moments later. I'm sorry, did you miss me? Hey, you waited till the end, so you definitely made it to the end. If you made it to the end, let me know you've seen the lion. Let me know you've seen the lion. I will know what that means. And I will go, hey, are you the lion? Are you the lion? Hello, lion. <laughs> Wait, no one's lying. We're, so, we're all goons here. But like, you, at least let me know you've seen the line. I'd be very happy to know which goons make it till the end and watch to the very last second. That is it. Guys, continue your goon watching time right now. There should be videos on the screen. Click on one of them. Continue um, getting your goon fix in. And the one in the middle, you can subscribe to me. All right, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.